Oh yes, it is good to be back. Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for six things that we learnt from Chelsea 2, Newcastle 0 or Newcastle 0, Chelsea 2 at St James's Park. One of the most comfortable victories that we will see from Chelsea this season or maybe it's just the sign of many more to come. We are currently top of the bloody league. At the time of me recording this, I think Villa will probably go top when they beat Brighton or if they beat Brighton. And I do want to say again, before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, if you're not yet subscribed to GBFC, I'd love to ask you to do so and hit the like button for the return of this series. And the fact that we're top of the league, Chelsea are cruising. We didn't even really need to enter a different gear today, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on within the video. But we start it off with a blue box, and I've given it to Tammy Abraham. I've said it countless times already this season. When Tammy understood when Werner came in that he might not be that number one striker anymore, Chelsea have been unfortunate with injuries, but at the same time, it's given Tammy the opportunity to come into the side, and when he has played, he's added new different layers to his game. We've seen him develop in so many different areas. He's become a bit more technical. He looks a lot smarter on the ball. The finish today was absolutely brilliant. He could have had one in the first half, but for a good save for the Newcastle goalkeeper from a good Tammy Abraham header, his movement is very good. And the link-up that we're seeing between him and Werner now is becoming really good. It's been a long time since we've had two strikers that can play on the pitch at the same time probably since a Didier drogba Nicolas Anelka partnership many years ago. Tammy, I thought, was excellent. I thought his movement off the ball was good as well. And the thing I really like about Tammy's attitude is you see even, like, the smallest little decision that goes his way. He, he's animated, you know? He really wants to be out there giving everything, proving a point to his manager and to his teammates and to the Chelsea fans as well. I think they gave him man of the match on BT Sport. Tammy was brilliant. And we move into box number two. It's a green box for Timo Werner. The thing I love about Timo Werner is sometimes he misses chances or it's not quite going his way, but he doesn't sulk. He doesn't get in his own head. He keeps going. He keeps fighting. And the run that he made for Tammy Abraham's goal is absolutely sensational. It's the movement. It's the speed. It's the directness. And then the pass was perfectly weighted. Tammy slots it in the bottom corner. We saw Timo also around the goalkeeper, but for a marginal offside, he would have got his goal, which would have been five games in a row in a Chelsea shirt. I think the first time a player would have scored five in a row since like 1990. He didn't manage to get it. He did score, but it's ruled out offside. Chelsea were confident. Chelsea were comfortable. And I think that Timo Werner's game is getting better and better. It's complementary to his teammates. His movement is excellent. And I think if Ziyech would have been a bit more on the ball with his passing today... Newcastle were there for the taking. Every time the Chelsea players had the ball, Newcastle showed us too much respect. You know, they weren't closing us down tight enough. They weren't pressing. They were sitting deep. And I feel as though, like, if you're a Newcastle fan, I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. But they're the home side, you know, and Chelsea were dominating possession. I think in the first half, we had something like 80% possession for the majority of it. We lost it a little bit towards the end of that first half. But we were never tested, you know. Every time we went forward, we looked like we could score, which is brilliant to see. It was only two today, another clean sheet, and we move into box number three. And I've given box number three to N'Golo Kante. The man is looking evergreen again, you know. When he's on the field, he's running around, he's winning headers, he's getting in between defenders, breaking up the play in the centre. And I said this a few weeks ago, before we started going on this little winning run, if we can get the best out of N'Golo Kante playing solo in that deeper role, then Chelsea can be so more flamboyant going forward with our attacks. N'Golo Kante is back to his very best. And I think the way that he spread out the play today was good. His passing, there were some good, nice, dynamic defense splitting passes in there as well. I love seeing this guy play. And I think a lot of us, including myself at times towards the end of last season because of the injuries and whatnot, we asked questions about whether Kante was going to be able to operate and perform on the same level that we've become accustomed to from him over the years. Now, we're seeing him at his very best again. And I thought he was absolutely excellent. We move into box number four. And this guy is getting better game by game. Of course, it is the right back. It is the monster. He's so flipping big and strong. 
It's Reese James. I thought he was fantastic again today. Even without Thiago Silva in that back line, we look at Rudiger's performance. I thought Rudiger was good. He put in a good block. I think it was in the first half, or I think maybe it was actually Kante that made the block, and the commentary said it was Rudiger. Rudiger was good. Zuma was good again. Almost got himself his fourth goal of the season. But the standout defensive display from me was from Reese. You know, Alan St. Maximan's a decent player. He likes to try and get in behind. He likes to run. He's strong. But Reese James again just showed him bodying players off the ball, winning the ball, distributing it well. The crosses again were brilliant. We could have had five or six today. And I don't think anyone watching it would have been like, Chelsea didn't deserve that. It's a little bit flattering. And I thought that Reese was one of our best attacking outlets again. Every time he gets the ball, he's looking to carry it forward. He's a very smart player despite his age. He looks like he's been in the Premier League for about six or seven years. I think Reese is growing game by game. It's kind of like a shame because I love Azpilicueta and he's obviously been at the club for a long time. But the more Reese plays, the more it's becoming clear that Frank Lampard sees him as the best right back currently at the club. And we move into box number five and I've given it to Mateo Kovacic. It's another green box. There were a couple of misplaced passes and a couple of sloppy balls today from Kova. But what I really like about Kovacic now is his industry going forward. He looks to get into space in more attacking areas a lot more. I think maybe it was a confidence issue. Maybe it was the way that he was being deployed in his first season at Chelsea where we didn't really see him getting involved in attacks. And I I think that his passing has improved dramatically as well. We know how good he is when he is on the ball at turning defenders, trying to get out of tight pockets of space. And Chelsea were just very good all over the pitch today. I could have given green boxes to virtually anybody again. I want to give a big shout out to Mendy as well, who has kept another clean sheet in a Chelsea shirt. He's one of the most informed goalkeepers in the world at this moment in time. I feel flipping good making this video, you know. After a nice little international break, it's been long. Back with a 2-0 win, as predicted, of course, in the GBFC match preview. I thought Kovacic was very good. I thought he covered so much ground on the pitch. And I move into box number six. And I feel like, you know, I've been given so many green boxes recently. But I've given a yellow today. And I've put some gears inside the box. I feel as though today, despite it being very, very comfortable, we never really looked like conceding a goal. I really wanted to see us go for it more. You know, in that first half where... Newcastle were giving us so much space. There were so many opportunities for Chelsea to get in behind, to run and drive. I don't feel as though we ever really tried to hit different gears. We weren't really pushing through the motions the way that we could have. And Newcastle in the second half, they had opportunities. You know, if Joe Linton wasn't just the biggest joke of a striker in the Premier League, then, you know, it could have been a totally different story. And Chelsea playing a little bit slow and just a little bit too comfortable without really pushing through at 1-0 when Newcastle were really there for the taking. They weren't offering anything going forward. They were sitting back, inviting the pressure. I'd like to see us, when we see these opportunities in game, I'd love to see us go for it and try and kill teams off within the first half. We've got the capabilities and I know it's like a little bit of a picky thing to think about, but you know, we're dealing with the Chelsea side now who are very good. As I said, we're currently top of the league and we're involved in this title race, whether anyone wants to believe it or not. I've said it all season. I think we can go ahead and win the league. I think we will win the Premier League. And it is another good away win against an opposition that we sometimes struggle against. And that is six things that we've learned. As always with this series, it's all about what you guys have to say. I would love to hear the six things that you learned from this game in the comments down below. As I said earlier, if you're not yet subscribed, I'd love to ask you to do so. Hit the like button on today's video. If we can hit 6,000, that would be grand. Gonna upload this one for you now, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.